data frames. So this part of the lecture is not really about Jupyter Notebooks, but we are going to start dealing with data and handling data and organizing data. So we need to delve into some more Python coding. And what we are going to do, we're going to use uh, Python libraries that makes it easier to deal with data. You can use the native Python data structures, but there's some really useful um, libraries that are used in data science uh, all throughout to make it much more convenient to deal with matrices. And I'm sure you learn about matrices when you had the MATLAB course. So this is a little bit of an equivalent uh, handling of matrices in Python. So there is uh, two key libraries that you want to have installed and used. And we're going to go over a little bit of how to use those libraries. But the two libraries are NumPy and Panda. There's also a library called SciPy that I think you would need. And the NumPy is a numerical uh, data analysis um, critical library to know how to use. It has a lot of math, math functions and implementations. And Pandas is uh, really um, useful for dealing with matrices and data frames. So um, you can uh, see more, you can read more information about those two libraries, but in general, right now, uh, let's uh, try to install uh, Pandas and NumPy using pip. So if you can uh, type those two commands and making sh make sure that you have those two libraries uh, in your environment installed. All right, so now um, if you guys can take the notebook that we shared with you on Blackboard and open it in, um, you know, put it in a folder, like a folder for the lecture where you stored your original notebook and then locate that IPython notebook file and, and open it and you should see what you see here. So now that we have it, we're just going to go over what this notebook is doing. Uh, the first thing that it does, it imports some libraries. And we also, uh, later on in the lecture, we will need Seaborn and matplotlib. And gzip is, should be already in your environment. But if you can install also matplotlib and Seaborn and try to execute the first cell by just using the run button. And now what we are going to do, we're going to take some process data that we created in the Mayan lab, and we're going to fetch that process data and load it into our notebook and do some analysis with it. Specifically, what we want to do, we want to compare uh, and combine two process data sets to identify potential relationships between those two data sets. So we have this... Um, resource called Harmonizome, where for that uh, database, we um, went to the public domain and processed data from about 70 different uh, resources that have published omics data. And we converted all this data into uh, data structures that are easy to work with. So those are either gene set libraries, which we're gonna learn about, uh, or data matrices that have the genes as the rows and then the different uh, attributes of those genes as the columns. So you can see that there is a bunch of different downloads. Uh, those are all those types of um, process data that all in, in the same format. So one of the things that we're going to do, we're going to take some data matrices from Harmonizome we're gonna automatically download them, and then we're going to compare two data sets. Overall, like um, the Harmonizome was also published in 2016. It has been accessed by 1.2 million users 
and there are almost a thousand citations for the harmonized on paper. So it's been a really successful, popular effort that enables a lot of uh, machine learning applications and drug discovery and data discovery in our field of uh, system biology, bioinformatics. So the two data sets that we're going to look at today are CCLE, which is the Cancer Cell Line Encyclopedia. It's an effort that was uh, started at the Broad Institute. Basically, they have a collections of over a thousand cancer cell lines where they are profiling those cell lines. First, they did um, genomics of those cell lines and also transcriptomics and specifically RNA-seq. So they have the gene expression, the basal gene expression of each cell line. There's also data about this collection of cells at the proteome level, as well as the, how those cells respond to drugs. And this is a useful resource for potentially identifying drugs and pathways uh, across you know, pan cancer, across different cancers. So those cell lines are from uh, various cancers. So to create a cell line, as many of you know, you take a tumor and then you isolate cells from that tumor and then you immortalize those cells and then you can grow them indefinitely in culture and then you can do experiments with them you can share them with other labs so there are established cancer cell lines that people are working with and this is a collection of over a thousand of them this other data set that we're going to look at it's called kinome scan and it was generated for the Lynx program, which is an NIH common fund program that we participated in. And to create Kinome Scan, basically um, the investigators at Harvard and specifically Peter Sorger's group, they uh, used about 200 drugs that are known to be kinase inhibitors. And then they profile those kinase inhibitors of how much they inhibit uh, each of the 440 purified kinases. So you have a purified kinase assay array, and then you apply the drugs to all those kinases. There's a way to measure kinase activity for each of those kinases. So what we want to know is kinases are highly expressed in the different cell lines, and potentially which drugs could downregulate the expression of those kinases as potential drugs. It's not perfect, but this is just demonstration of how we can cross two different data sets, two different omics type of data sets, and find some uh, insights from it. So the first step is to actually fetch the data from Harmonizome. So if you guys can run this uh, cell that gets you the CCL, CCLE data sets from Harmonizome, and let me know if it runs and if you're able to execute it. You should see the tables in those uh, different formats. And one of the things that Edo is doing is slightly formatting those tables, removing some of the extra rows and columns that are in those tables uh, for convenience of the next step of analysis. So one of the things that also Edo is doing is using this head command to visualize the top five rows of a table. So this is just the kinome scan. So if the CCLE uh, dataset was successfully fetched, you should be able to also fetch the kinome scan dataset and just execute that command. Here, just uh, you know, we're going through some of the pandas commands that are useful to know. Um, there is the head and tail functions that visualize the beginning and the end of, a of the data frame. You can access indices, columns, and also you can apply functions to all of the data elements in the table. The last one is operation, which is uh, you can do some, if you take two matrices, you can operate on them, you can multiply the matrices, divide them, or do some type of subtract them from one another, very similar to what you can do in MATLAB. So this is the overview of the head and tail commands. So you already executed them in your uh, attempt to uh, fetch and then look at the data frames. 
So those are just ways to look at the top five and the bottom five elements, rows in the tables. And those are very useful to see what type of data you have in there. Like, did you get the right data or something went wrong? You can also access the columns or, and then what happens to the, your data frame, it's becoming a series. So a series is another type of object of uh, pandas that only includes just one column of the data. So the, this way you can uh, specify the column based on the column label or the column index, and then you can get a series out of your data frame. So here it's also, again, you know, looking at specific rows or specific columns. So to access rows, you can use the lock method where you can use the row label or the iLock which is a row index. And then again, it's becoming a kind of series because only have the labels and the values for one row or one column. The apply command is a way to apply function across all of the data sets. So here, for example, you apply the mean command, the average command onto each row. And then you are also end up with a series that has the average value of each element in the room. So this is a good way to systematically change all of the data in your data frame. So this is another example where we are trying to do for the CCLE data set. We're trying to find the genes that are either highly or lowly expressed in the CCLE data set. So we converted those into uh, zeros and ones and only retained those genes that have the highest uh, or lowest expression compared to all other cell lines. So we will go over how to do data normalization and identify differentially expressed genes in future lectures. But right now, uh, you can see that Edo was able to convert the uh, CCLE dataset just has the value of expression across the cell lines into gene sets that are either up-regulated or down-regulated for each cell line. So now, once he identified those gene sets from each table, he can convert the data into a dictionary or into a gene set library. So a gene set library is another representation of the same data, but here you have a term, for example, either a kinase or a cell line, and then a list of genes or set of genes that belong to that term. So in this particular code, we are creating those two dictionaries. A dictionary is another type of data structure in Python. And we fill this dictionary with the either the CCLE gene set library or the kind of scan library. So if we can try to execute those cells, what we see in the output is that the CCLE library has 1037 rows, which are each representing a cell line. And then the kind of scan has 71 kinases that have substrates based on uh, some threshold. And then we're gonna to try to cross those two. The last part that we need to do is to compute the overlap between the gene sets that are now in our two dictionaries. And we're gonna use the Jacquard index to do that. So the Jacquard index is one measure of similarity between sets. We will learn later in the course about the potentially more sophisticated methods of comparing sets. But uh, the Jacquard is uh, very effective and easy to compute. It is a normalization of uh, overlap. So you can count you know, the number of genes that are overlapping between two sets. But the problem is that if the sets are not the same size, that count will not be very useful. So the Jacquard is a normalization of that, which is normalizing it to a number between zero and one. And it uh, computes the intersection of the two sets over the union. So how many genes in general you have across the two sets and how many of them are overlapping. So this is the formula and union and intersection symbols 
uh, used to represent that as a formula, and then you can also visualize it as a Venn diagram. The code that you see here, uh, you can try to execute it, computes the jacquard index across the two data sets and produces distance table between all of the gene sets in the two tables. So the rows are cell lines and the columns are drugs. The values are indicating the level of overlap between zero and one. Zero meaning that there's no overlap, and then one means that there is full 100% overlap. So this is the, the next step. You can try to execute it. The last part of the notebook is uh, explaining what I'm showing, demonstrating that you can export the data frame the pandas data frame in to many different output formats. And these are a list of all of those. And in particular, in our example, we can create a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet from the data set of the CCLE. And this is done by the CCLE to CSV and CCLE to Excel uh, functions. This is obviously enable you to open the files that you processed with other software and other tools. So this is just something that is critical to know and it's also a part of the notebook. So just to summarize this segment, we installed NumPy and Pandas and also we installed Seaborn and MATLAB Lib, which will be in the next part. And then we learn how to manipulate data frames. Uh, we loaded two data sets from Harmonizome into data frames, we converted those data matrices into gene set libraries. After filtering some columns uh, from the CCLE data frame, only retain the upregulated genes for each cell line. And then we cross those two data sets with the Jacquard index to create cancer cell line kinase inhibitor distance table. And we saw how we can export that data set. So these are some additional resources that you can go over, NumPy, Pandas, and SciPy, the Harmonizon, CCLE, Canom Scan, and the Linux program.